Hello learners, welcome to this course on Fundamentals and Programming of 8085 Microprocessor. So in this tutorial, I will be discussing about Programmable Interrupt Controller Interfacing with 8085 Microprocessor. So Programmable Interrupt Controller IC number is 8259. So in 8085 and 8086, we have 5 hardware interrupts and 2 hardware interrupts respectively. In 8085, the 5 hardware interrupts are TRAP, RST 7.5, 6.5, 5.5 and INTR. So interrupts can be generated by a peripheral device. When an interrupt is generated, the CPU needs to execute the service routine for that particular interrupt. So in 8085, 5 interrupts are supported. Out of this 5, TRAP is a non-maskable interrupt. RST 7.5, 6.5, 5.5 and INTR are maskable interrupts. So it can be stopped without interfering with the CPU. In case of 8086, you have 2 interrupts. NMI, non-maskable interrupt and INTR signals. So this interrupt capability is very limited in case of your 8085 and 8086 microprocessor. So in 8085 we have only 5, in 8086 we have only 2. So we can increase this interrupt handling capability by using this 8259 IC. So we can increase the number of peripherals utilizing the CPU by using this 8259 IC. So an increase of interrupt handling capability can be achieved. So this chip combines multiple interrupt sources to a single interrupt output. So I can connect multiple interrupt sources and it can provide a single interrupt output which can given as an input for your microprocessor. So it accepts 8 interrupting devices namely IR0 to IR7. So in the pin details you can see here from pin number 18 to pin number 25 you have IR0 to IR7. So here I can connect the interrupting peripheral devices. So 8 peripheral devices I can connect and this peripheral devices can make use of this IC. So once a particular peripheral generates an interrupt so that signal can be communicated to the CPU using this interrupt pin. So this interrupt pin needs to be connected to the INTR of your 8085 or 8086 respectively. So any of these peripherals connected to IR0 to IR7 can generate an interrupt for the CPU. So it identifies the highest priority interrupt request among those inputs. If I have multiple interrupts, for example, IR0 to IR7, I have I can connect 8 peripherals which can generate the interrupt. If multiple peripherals are generating the interrupt at the same time, then depending upon the priority, a particular interrupt can be serviced. So a priority setting is also possible when we have multiple interrupts with the help of this IC. So this IC identifies the interrupt with higher priority. So the priority is set like this, IR0 as a higher priority when compared to IR7. So for example, if I have something like IR2 and IR4 are generating interrupts, then IR2 as a highest priority. So first it will be serviced and then subsequently IR4 will be serviced. And one important thing you have to remember here is the output pin, which is an interrupt pin from this 8259 IC needs to be connected only to the INTR pin of 8085 or 8086 microprocessor. It cannot be connected to other pins. It cannot be connected to TRAP, RST 7.5, 6.5, 5.5 of 8085. Same way to non-maskable interrupt of 8086 microprocessor. It can be connected only to the INTR pin. So some of the important features of this IC is this chip is especially designed for 8085 and 8086 to increase the interrupt capability. It can be programmed in either edge triggered mode or level triggered mode. So the interrupt occurrence can happen in relation to edge triggering or in level triggering. We can also mask a particular interrupt using interrupt request 
register and interrupt mask register. So we can mask, we can stop the interrupt from reaching the CPU. And we can also cascade this 8 to 5 9 chips so that the interrupt capability can be increased further. So up to 64 interrupt lines can be supported by this IC. So for example, IR0 can be connected to another 8 to 5 9 IC. So that 8 to 5 9 IC will have 8 interrupts. So same way from IR0 to IR7, I can connect 8 to 5 9 ICs. So thereby 64 interrupt lines can be supported by this IC. And another important thing is clock cycle is not required for processing your interrupts. So this is the architecture of your 8 to 5 9 programmable interrupt controller. So here we have three important registers. In-service register which is called as a ISR. Interrupt request register is called as a IRR and interrupt mask register is your IMR. So first let us see one by one this registers. So interrupt request register, whenever a particular interrupt is activated, that is set in this interrupt request register. It's a 8 bit register, each bit for an interrupt. So for example, IR0 is activated means the 0th bit of IRR register will be set. So it will be used for identifying which interrupts are active, which interrupts are being generated. So if I have multiple interrupts being generated, then multiple bits in the IRR will be set. Then the priority resolver, it will identify the interrupt with the highest priority and that particular interrupt will be serviced by the priority result. Interrupt mask register is used for masking a particular interrupt. So we can stop or we can filter out the interrupt from reaching the CPU. So that can be done with the help of an interrupt mask register. Again, it's an 8-bit register. By setting one, we can mask a particular interrupt. Then I have in-service register, which is ISR register. So currently, which interrupt is being serviced, that information is available in this in-service register. Again, it's a 8-bit register. So each bit for an interrupt. So which interrupt is currently being serviced by the CPU, that information is available in the in-service register. So the priority resolver makes use of all these three, uh, three registers, in-service register, interrupt request register, and interrupt mask register to identify the interrupt to be serviced by the CPU. Then there is a read-write control logic. So read-write control logic for reading the data from this registers and also to write data onto this registers. So we can set the mask register, same way we can read the mask register. So like that we can read and write the different registers available. And there is also a chip select line for selecting this IC and the A0 line to address the IC. Then there is a data bus buffer which is connected to the system bus of your microprocessor D0 to D7. So this data bus buffer will be used for transferring the opcode of the selected interrupts. For example, a particular interrupt is selected. The corresponding ISR address, interrupt service routine address should be sent to the microprocessor. So that is done by sending a call instruction. So call and address location. So when a particular interrupt is activated, then the corresponding ISR address should be sent to the microprocessor. So that data transfer get transfers to this data bus buffer. And also for writing the control words, we can make use of this data bus buffer. So we have two functionalities here. We can write the control word from CPU to the 8 to 5 9 IC, same way the ISR address can be sent from your 8 to 5 9 IC to the CPU. Then only the CPU can go to that location and can execute the ISR. Next, we have a cascade buffer which can be used for cascading multiple 8 to 5 9 to increase the capability of your interrupts handling by the CPU 
we make use of this cascade buffer. So thereby I can connect many interrupts to the microprocessor. So how to interface this 8259 IC with your 8085 microprocessor. So here I have shown the interfacing diagram. So this is the 8259 IC and here I have an 8085 microprocessor. So in 8259 IC it supports 8 interrupts IR0 to IR7 and inside you have a ISR, interrupt service register, interrupt request register, interrupt mask register and all this data are taken into account by a priority solver to identify which interrupt needs to be serviced. Once a particular interrupt is identified, then the signal is sent through this INT line. It goes as an input to the INTR line of your 8085 microprocessor. Upon receiving the interrupt request, an acknowledgement signal can be sent by the 8085 to the 8259 IC. Once an acknowledgement signal is sent by the microprocessor, then this 8259 it needs to send the address of the ISR, address of the interrupt service routine. So the address of the interrupt service routine is sent through this data lines, it goes into the 8085 microprocessor. So the priority resolver decides to activate the INT output. So when it will activate the INT output on the following conditions. First one is when an IR input is activated. When the input is activated, it can generate an interrupt. And also that particular IR interrupt should not be masked, it should not be stopped. And another important factor is the processor is presently not servicing an IR request with higher priority. If a particular interrupt is being serviced with a higher priority, then that particular IR needs to wait until the completion of the interrupt with higher priority. So once an interrupt comes through INTR line to the 8085 microprocessor, so the 885 completes the execution of the instruction. Then it starts to respond to that interrupt request. So it sends out an INTA signal three times. It sends INTA signal three times. When the first time a particular INTA signal is generated, 8259 what it does, it sends the opcode for your call instruction. So opcode for your call instruction is CDH. So this opcode is sent by the 8259 to, to the 8085 microprocessor and this opcode it goes into the instruction register. The opcode for your call instruction goes to the instruction register. When the second time INTA signal is generated by the 8085 microprocessor, now the 8259 it sets the lower order address of the ISR, interrupt service routine. So that lower order address, it goes into the Z register. And for the third time, when INTA signal is generated, the higher order address is sent to the microprocessor and that address goes to the W register. So a 16 bit address is being sent because 8085, it supports 16 address lines. So it can access up to 64 KB of your memory. So a microprocessor 8085, it generates three INTA signals. For the first INTA signal, opcode of the call instruction is sent and it gets loaded into the instruction register of 8085 microprocessor. When the second time the INTA signal is generated, the lower order address, lower order byte of the address goes into the Z register of your 8085. When INTA signal is generated for the third time, then the higher order address goes into the W register of your 8085. So remember this W register and Z register are hidden. Okay, it is used internally by the microprocessor. Once an instruction and address is being sent, this can be decoded and the CPU can go to the interrupt service routine for execution of the program. Upon completion of the interrupt service routine, the CPU can come back to the main program. So, and also note that the 8259 can be configured in a rotating priority mode. Okay, so, after, it is something like a cyclic priority. So, first IR0 will be serviced, IR1, IR2, so like that it can go to IR7, 
then afterwards again it can come to IR0. Where it can be also in a cyclic priority mode or rotating priority mode. So this is how an AT85 is interfaced with your A2 finite, thereby the internal handling capacity. Because initially in 885 we have only one pin. So now this one pin is connected to eight interrupt lines. So we have increased the interrupt handling capability of the microprocessor. Now let us look at how to cascade this 8 to finite ISIS. So here we have an 8085 microprocessor. So that INTR line is connected with an 8 to finite. So here it supports 8 interrupts and each interrupt is connected with again another 8 to finite IC. So again this subsequent 8 to finite can handle 8 interrupts. So like that I have 8 8 to finites which means each 8 to finite can support 8 interrupts. So thereby 64 interrupts can be supported by your cascading of 8 to finite ICs. So in a single pin I can be able to interface 64 peripherals. So thereby the number of peripherals interface to your 885 can be increased easily. So when a particular interrupt is generated, the corresponding INT line will be activated and it goes as an input to the interrupt line of your the higher location A to finite. And this A to finite again it will generate an INT signal. So this INT signal can go as an input to the INTR of your 885 microprocessor. So the acknowledgement from the 885 microprocessor can be given to the subsequent a to finite ICs. You can see here also I have an acknowledgement signal and for the subsequent A to finite also we have the acknowledgement signal. So the important thing here is depending upon which interrupt is being activated, the corresponding address of the interrupt service routine should be sent by the corresponding A to finite IC. So this is how we can increase the number of interrupts supported by your 8085 or 8086 microprocessors. So in this tutorial, I have discussed about a programmable interrupt controller which is 8 to finite IC which is especially designed for 8085 and 8086 microprocessor to increase the interrupt handling capability. So we can increase the interrupt handling capability up to 64 interrupts can be supported. And remember this a to finite IC's output INT line needs to be connected only to the INTR input of your microprocessor. It should not be connected to the other interrupt lines like in 885 trap, RST 7.5, 6.5, 5.5. Same way for in 886, it should not be connected to non maskable interrupts. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more technical learning. Thank you.